Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we are working on restoring my Famco Arbor Press, and I've got a part here. This is the piece that the handle fits into, the lever that you pull on, and we've got a very worn area in here that we need to fix, and uh, that's gonna be the project for the day, is uh, putting a new piece of material in here. So let me zoom you in here, show you what we got, and let's get over to the middle machine and start making some modifications to this so we can fix it. So again, here is that piece and it pivots on this point right here and I got a counterweight in the back. The handle fits into this uh, part up here. There's a hollow spot in there where you can put the handle down in, set screw in the top. Uh, but the area we, area we got to work on is this right here. There's a slot right here that fits up over a pin on the press and it it pivots on that pin. This is the pin that goes in here. It's a one inch diameter pin. And um, the issue we've got is, is over the years, you can see it's worn out up in here. They put so much pressure on this thing, so so much pressing on it, that uh, it has literally worn this area of cast iron out of there over time. Now the pin is made out of steel. Of course it's harder it, and it may even be a hardened pin. I'll have to check it. But uh, the cast iron is relatively soft compared to the steel. So this is the wear point. Uh, your pin should not wear, your cast iron should. Uh, but there's really no way to take up the wear or anything like that uh, built into this casting. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna actually take this over to the mill machine and I'm gonna mill this thing out, you know, nice and square and flat where it's not, got, take this, this radius out basically and put it put a piece of metal back in there and what i've got to work with is uh this uh piece right here this is some scrap left over from when i did that flange job on the steam locomotive this is actually cast iron right here and uh, it's extra material so i will machine a matching piece to put that metal back in out of this material and we will then reattach it to the piece and I'm debating right now as to whether I'm gonna use a mechanical fastener or whether I'm gonna braze that in there. We'll figure that out uh, once we get into the project. So for now, let's head over to the middle machine. I wanna get this thing set up where we can go ahead and get some nice straight and square surfaces in there uh, to put a piece of metal back in. We're not gonna take out a whole lot of material, mainly just getting straight edges rather than that radius that we have now. I've got this set up over here on the mill machine now. We had to put some little spacers up underneath here to get everything level. And then I got it clamped in three places with the spacers right up underneath those three points. So good three points of contact. We should be good to go. Um, got a half inch end mill in here, a pretty long uh, shank. This is a regrind that's a fresh regrind. So should be good and sharp. And again, um, well, first off too, I took an indicator and just kind of sweep this bottom jaw. Of course, there's a lot of wear in there, so it was a little bit of a guesstimation getting it lined up, but it's pretty darn close. Gonna be close enough uh, for what we're doing here anyway. So let's go ahead and fire the mill up. And we will come in here and start. Kind of go back here to the back. Start milling this out. Again, I'm right now I'm just trying to get a kind of a straight back back there. So I can replace that piece and not have all these weird angles. Pretty good back shoulder now. I'm going to um, now come out the, the other side and get a flat top in there. Probably got to make a couple of passes to get that cleaned up like it needs to be.
I need to make uh, that piece fit in here. This is again a piece of cast iron. I just band sawed it out rough and um, get my parallel set back up. But uh, we're gonna get this machined up to size to fit in there where we can put her in place. So got her in the vise, got my face mill going here. Let's uh, mill this thing square. All right, this should be the final pass here. Taking about 30 thou off. All right, we got these two sides flat and parallel to one another. Um, probably not precision parallel, but close enough for what we're doing here. Next thing I need to do is get this width here in this direction down. Right now we're about one inch eight hundred thousandths. I need to be about one inch five hundred and twenty-five thousandths. So I'm just going to start by getting a good uh, clean face on one side, and I'm making these two sides square with one another in this direction. So let's come in here, touch off. We're going to take about a 50 thou cut roughly and just go down through there and clean it up. All right, we're going to flip this over now. We'll come in and do the other side. Make sure we're getting right on the size. I'll be back in a bit. So next thing I need to do is, is get my N squared up up here. And to do this, I'm gonna use one of my Z squares. These are little squares made by Stan Zinkowski. And the cool thing about it, I mean, that's a, you got a little ledge on both the 45 and the 90 degree side. And I can just kind of hang that right there on the top of my vise. And now I can square this part up to the top of my vise, which I know is a, uh, ground in square to the vise. And I'll just tighten that up. And that rough bandsaw cut will magically turn into a nice square cut. So uh, let's go ahead and get that side cleaned up. All right, let's give you an update of where we're at here. Of course, we've got our piece slotted out here and here's our new piece, uh, pretty much ready to go back in. I went ahead and cut it to length and then I took it over to my uh, bench grinder and ground some radiuses and stuff in here. So now basically this piece just kind of fits right down into the slot here that we created uh, over on the mill machine. Next step is I need to actually get this piece put in place and I, I thought about how I wanted to go about doing this. My first thought was to just drill a cu couple of um, countersunk holes in here for socket cap screws and, and just mechanically fasten this with the idea that if I needed to down the road replace it, I could just take it out and replace it again. But as I got to thinking about that, all the pressure when we're pressing on this is coming on this little tongue right here. And I was just afraid that if I drilled material out of there, that was gonna create a place for this thing to, to fracture and crack out and lose a big chunk of metal up in here. Uh, so I really wanted to keep all the strength in here. So my next uh, plan here is we're just going to braze it in place. And I always get asked the question, why not weld it? Why are you brazing it instead of welding it? Remember, we're dealing with cast iron here. We got cast iron is what this piece is made out of. Our piece that we're putting in is made out of cast iron. And cast iron, guys, quite honestly, is not the best material to weld with. When you're welding, you're actually melting material um, and putting a filler in there. With brazing, you're not melting it, you're heating it up and you're putting a dissimilar material, you're flowing it in there and letting it chemically bond to the metal. With cast iron, because of the structure of the cast iron, 
it's generally not the best idea to try to melt this stuff with welding. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. There are certain uh, welding rods that are specifically for that. But honestly, I have not had good luck with it myself. Other people have. I prefer brazing. Uh, brazing is extremely strong. Uh, some people say, well, it's not as strong as welding. It's pretty darn close. And uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do with here. Uh, I thought about TIG brazing this, but guys, I'm just going to use the torch because that's what I'm used to. Uh, I'm going to start with the rosebud. I'm going to come in here. We're going to get this thing kind of up to temperature. The rosebud's just going to produce a bigger flame. Uh, we'll get some heat in here. Then I will switch over to a uh, brazing tip and we'll just braze this in uh, with some brazing rods. Of course, this is a bronze material and the white on the outside is just a flux that's on this. So let's get this prepped up and uh, we'll go ahead and start brazing. All right, we're just gonna start by heating things up. When brazing, you don't wanna heat up just one small area. You wanna get really the whole part heated up. The metal is gonna expand. You know, we're not gonna worry about getting way down here, but I am gonna try to at least get some heat throughout this whole arm because the metal is gonna expand wherever you put heat. I don't want it to be hot in one spot and cool in another spot. I at least want there to be a gradient across this of the heat. And of course, we'll have to get the area up here a lot hotter for brazing. Generally speaking with brazing, you just want to get it about a dull cherry red and uh, your braze should just kind of melt and float down in there. So it's gonna take me a few minutes to get some heat into this. We'll be back. All right, we're gonna get in here now with some more uh, focus heat and braze this together. With that front piece brazed in place, I should be able to roll this over now and braze the sides up. guys I think we've got it braised together I am going to wrap this up and let it cool nice and slow We'll let it sit in that blanket and cool down. Guys, I let this cool down overnight and uh, here's the results of the brazing. All in all, it's pretty good. I got a little bit of a gob up here in one spot, but this laid down pretty good. This area here is where I was kind of transitioning the top and the bottom, but uh, all in all, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna probably uh, come in here and do a little cleanup on it. Uh, this top side here needs to pretty much be flush on both sides so I'll probably take a grinder and just kind of grind that down. I'm going to try to leave as much of that metal in there as I can uh, but we'll like I said just kind of clean it up a little bit as well. So I'll do that off camera and we'll let you see what it looks like when we get done. All right guys so a little bit of work on the angle grinder there and then a little bit of flap wheel and wire wheeling and I think I got that blended in nicely. Preserved most of the braze material on there. Um, Got the little nose coming over and 
So you get this back in the frame and there's the other side. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, really the next big step here is I need to take this over back over to the milling machine and set it up and we need to remill this uh, one inch opening here. I know that this is a little bit narrow. I made it that way on purpose because I want to get this set up where uh, we got a perfectly perfect uh, area in here, but that's going to be a later step. Uh, I think right now what I'm going to do is go ahead and shoot this with some paint and then we can take it over to the milling machine after that. I'm set up over here on the milling machine now with our piece again and uh, this is all brazed in. Of course we've painted it and the goal here is I want to recreate a one inch slot in here. Got everything clamped down to the table. Should be nice and snug. Uh, we're gonna crank up that one inch end mill and um, ease our way down in there. Uh, it's pretty much gonna have to do it all in one pass just the way we got this set up. I wanna get that radius down in the bottom. So um, that's the game plan. We're just gonna ease it in there. Take our time, cut her out. All right, let's ease our way in there and see what happens. I should have it set up where this side is more or less just barely touching on that cutter. And it should be coming into contact about right there. Right there into the back. I don't want to take it any deeper, but I do want to get all the way in there. And that feels like it's cutting all the way around, so. This is the pin that's got to fit in there. And you know it's a little bit tight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed over, feed in the table about 10 thou this way and um, take another pass just to get some clearance. in there so that should be good all right i think we got her we're ready to start putting this back together so i've got i'm gonna start with the heaviest part here which is this table which of course i've got on my engine hoist here and uh get it over here lined up i think i'm gonna put a little oil behind that Bring this back in place. And we got a plate back here on the back. It actually uh, slides up and down with it as well. Let's see the big bolts on the top. And we got a smaller bolt with a uh, spring in there. I'm gonna put a washer on the top of that. I think that'll help give that a little more even pressure. I got to get the tension off of this, uh, off of the block here to, or off that strap to get the bottom to come in place. So, all right, I should be able to remove my strap now. And now I should be able to lift it up with this and get our, tooth engaged back there. And now we are sliding up and down like we should. So this is adjustable. 
up and down and you just catch the tooth down there you want to go into so um, that is installed i think it's tight like it needs to be so we can move on next thing we got here is our shaft it's going to go through here but before i put that in i'm just going to put some oil in these uh journals back here and this should just slide right in All right, that feels good. We've got a Woodruff key that goes in right here and that engages onto our um, piece here, the ratchet goes on, or I guess this is the ratchet. Next, this whole assembly here slides on the shaft. Put my paw right there where I can get to it here in just a second. Well, there we go. All right, and then this little paw back here that engages on the ratchet, fits on, slides into place. There we go. Now you see when we come up, that ratchet's over and then just drops back down. Like such. And right, we're gonna slide this whole mechanism out here for a minute. We gotta put our top piece on. The counterweight, the handle and all that. So there's a pin right here that that all fits onto. And then this thing slide back in. All right. So I wanna roll this around where I can see my set screw hole and kind of line those up take my lead hammer and just kind of tap it on there it goes and now get our set screw lined up in that hole there it is right there Tighten that up. Okay. And this is the lock, spindle lock. It's just kind of got a taper on that end that fits up on that shaft. And then there's a thumb screw on the end or handle here that was not drilled square. As you can see, it wobbles. I really can't fix that. So we're good to go. All right, we're getting ready to put our ram back in. Before I do, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this uh, grease back in here. This is just some Teflon grease, just to put a little bit of lube in this uh, gear. I don't wanna get it too thick, but wanna get some, some in there. That stuff should stick pretty good. We've got a little plate here on the side. There's a couple of set screws that you can use to adjust that. I'm gonna lean it over for the moment. I've got some blocks of wood down here. I'm gonna set my ram on. And take my lead hammer and just kind of tap it in here. There it goes. All right, so my plate that goes on the front, there's a recess in the back. And we got another place here for another little spacer that will uh, have a couple of set screws to tighten up. 
go ahead and get our screws tightened up holding that in. Our set screws in that tighten up on that pressure plate. They got a little jam nut on it, so once you get them set, you can adjust that nut. See, I'm gonna back them out right now. Okay. Put a little oil on this. And we'll cycle that through there a few times. I'm liking it. Guys, I think we about got her done here. So uh, at least what we can do today, we got the ratchet working good. Everything looks like it's working good. We've already tested the bottom. So I do have a few little things I need to do to finish this up. Number one, I need to make a new pin to go in this side. Uh, we'll have to get that done at a later, plate, later time. And the other thing I got to do is get a daisy wheel for this. And I mentioned before, and I want to thank everybody that sent me dimensions and pictures and everything of the daisy wheels. I think I've got one. Um, I need to get a handle. So I don't have, it didn't have a handle in it when I got it. So I need to get the right size piece of metal to go in there. And I need to probably figure out how long that needs to be according to spec. Don't want it to be too big or I might get too much pressure on this thing. but. All in all, she's looking pretty and uh, pretty much ready to go. So I'm excited. Another, another very useful tool for the shop here, knocked out and ready to go. And with that, that's gonna be a wrap on this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm sure you're gonna get to see this uh, press in action many times in the future. Uh, anyway, we appreciate you tagging along with us here. And with that, we're gonna sign off. Thanks as always for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up or appreciate it as our comments. So uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.